Good morning, here we are again with the Daily Post on this 20th day of July. And uh, we've got some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will help you through the day. We begin as usual with uh, a scripture from today from Psalm 4 and verse 4. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your heart upon your bed and be still. Selam. If you're reading the Bible in a year today, the aim is to read Psalms 26, 27 and 28 and Acts chapter 22. Some thoughts of the day. Be kind. Remember, everyone you meet is fighting a battle. Everybody is lonesome. He who is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. <laughs> Great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things brought together. And today's motivational thought, you've got to get up every morning with determination if you're going to go to bed with satisfaction. On this day, in 1837, London's first major railway station at Euston was opened. In 1878, the first telephone was introduced in Hawaii. And in 1917, on this day, in the Pact of Corfu, Serbs, Croats and Slovenes agreed to form a union called Yugoslavia. In 1944, Adolf Hitler on this day survived an assassination attempt led by German Army officer Klaus von Stauffenberg. In 1974, Turkish troops invaded northern Cyprus on this day. And in 1976, Viking One landed on Mars. In 2020, uh, scientists found evidence of volcanoes on Venus showing the planet was not as dormant as previously thought. That was reported in Nature Geoscience on this day in 2020. Personal story of the day. Gather at the river or jump in. Scripture from Romans 10 verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. When I was young, our family would go out on outings, and we would go to a small river in the bush. There used to be only sandstone, where there is now a high bridge. One could drive a car so far out into the creek and then wash it. We could also walk out there and play around in the water that flowed over the rocks. I always thought this was good fun. But as the years went by, they built a better road, and finally, a good bridge across the creek leading to another town. It was fun to gather at the river, but we didn't stop there most times. We usually jumped in, playing around in the water. It was hot, we wanted to get wet. It was no fun just looking at the water. Much more fun to get it on you. Just as with gathering at the river, in life, most of us gather at the river spiritually. We seem to go so far and never go far enough to jump in and get properly wet. It seems to be enough just to be saved and not to be bothered with anything else. Worship is singing a song, praying a prayer, listening to a talk and then going home. But God wants more than that from us. He wants a people that are unashamed to give themselves wholly to Him, to be used by Him, he doesn't want someone that is lukewarm, afraid to show emotion. So, be bold. Step into the water. Get wet for God. Wonderful thoughts. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, a good answer. A scripture from Matthew chapter 11, verse 19. References from Matthew 11, verses 1 to 19. But wisdom is justified by her children. If Christ was only a teacher, then he was a false one, since in his teaching he claimed to be more. If Christ was not, in a unique sense, 
quote, the image of the invisible God, unquote, as we read in Colossians 1 and verse 15, as the early Christians believed, then he was certainly the greatest imposter and deceiver of history. When John the Baptist wondered about the same issue, Jesus gave him a straightforward answer. He pointed first to the miracles of evidence of God's power and specific proof of his Messiahship. See verse 45 of today's scripture. Why? Because, and this was his second point, these miracles also fulfilled messianic prophecies such as Isaiah 35 verse 56 and 61 verse 1. Why did John doubt? Perhaps because he was in Herod's prison for standing for righteousness. As in many of the Psalms, it may have appeared to him that the wicked were winning. Or perhaps John felt like the Messiah had come, but with results he had not expected. Perhaps he just wanted some confirmation. In any case, Jesus affirmed him as the Elijah who had indeed prepared the way. See verse 14 and Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. John was a spiritual superstar, John the Baptist that is, but every Christian can live by the same faith and obedience, see verses 10 and 11, and is greater than John. Yet, like him, we can expect persecution. Unfortunately, the nation did not respond in faith to either John the Baptist or Jesus, or John the apostle, the uh, gospel writer, criticising both with false charges. By contrast, wisdom is justified of her children, as we read in verses 16 to 19 of today's scriptures. In today's verses, Jesus effectively answered John the Baptist's doubts. Are you ready to do the same, to give answers to the skeptics in your life? See 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. The second thought, fear can be controlled. One of Grimm's fairy tales is about a rather dim-witted young man who didn't understand what it meant to shudder in fear. People attempted to shock him by putting him in all sorts of terrifying situations, but to no avail. He finally did shudder, though not out of fear. He was asleep when someone poured a bucket of cold water and wiggling fish on top of him. <laughs> Something is wrong with us if we're never afraid. Fear is a natural human reaction to any difficult or dangerous undertaking, and God does not condemn it. Neither does he want us to be crippled by fear. Jesus' words to his disciples on more than one occasion were, Do not be afraid. Luke chapter 5 verse 10, chapter 12 verse 4, and John chapter 6 verse 20. In each case, he used a verb tense that suggests continuance. In other words, he told them, don't keep on fearing. We need not be overcome by our fear, nor should we ever say no to doing what we know God wants us to do, merely because we are fearful. God can turn our fear into fortitude. We can trust him and be not afraid. See Psalm 56 and verse 11. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of fear. So let's resist our fear and meet it with faith in our Lord. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, as recorded in Hebrews 13 and verse 5. Praise the Lord. Take those thoughts to heart. Step out in faith, as we saw yesterday. One uh, humorous story for today, a man in Scotland called his son in London the day before Christmas Eve and says, look, I hate to ruin your day, I'm not going to try to do Scottish accent, but I have to tell you that your mother and I are divorcing. 45 years of misery is enough. Dad, what are you talking about? The son screams. We can't stand the sight of each other any longer, says the father. We're sick of each other and I'm sick of talking about this. So you call your sister in Leeds and you tell her. Well, the son hung up. He was quite frantic. 
He called his sister and she exploded on the phone. She said, like Ella getting divorced, I'll take care of this. She calls Scotland immediately and screams at her father, you are not getting divorced. Don't do a single thing until I get there. I'm calling my brother back and we'll both be there tomorrow. Until then, don't do a thing. Do you hear me? And she hung up. The old man hung up the phone and turned to his wife and said, OK, they're coming for Christmas and what's more, they're paying their own way. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> there you go. The facts of the day. The Dead Sea is 365 metres or 1,200 feet below normal sea level. A storm officially becomes a hurricane when cyclone winds reach 119 kilometres per hour. That is 74 miles per hour. The closing thought for the day, Lord, may my ways be pleasing in your sight and fruitful to my friends. Another important thought to bear in mind. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that the thoughts and ideas and scriptures from today will in fact stay in your mind and challenge you and uplift you. We hope that you'll join us tomorrow for some more of the same. And in the meantime, may the Lord bless you and your day. Bye for now.